Yeah, it's not, it is going to be. Um, we're actually going to expand the season a little bit to include um, a lot more stories for both Diggle and Felicity. And so it will be about Oliver, but it's a new chapter in his evolution. And so we will be looking back so much as we're looking forward to who he's going to become and what his relationships are going to be like going forward from the last three seasons. We're kind of closing those three chapters and opening a new one. That's great. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> you wouldn't tell us, never done this before. <laughs> never done it. Once the show's established, you usually have a little bit more leeway to be uh, to start thinking out of the box and explore and experiment. What can we expect with the new season? Where are you going? You know, it's funny. I I don't know if I think about it in terms of exploring or experimenting. I mean, certainly, you know, four seasons in, you're always looking to top yourself. I think, you know, season three, we did some really, really crazy things. Um, and. And what I really like about season four is it's going to have its normal twists and turns, but I don't think it's as, you know, sort of crazy tune storytelling like we were doing, you know, in season three, where it's just these plot twists were just coming at you. So it was like an orgy of plot twists towards the end. Um, I th but I think the show, you know, like when he says, it's, 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 a, it's a new beginning, it's a new, it's, I wouldn't call it a, a you know, it's a, it's a, it's a new, it feels like a new show. Not a brand new show, but definitely feels like the show is evolving, as all shows should do to stay fresh and burn new. Is season three very told Oliver that he could do more good as Oliver came in the era? Is that something we'll see explored more in season four? Him doing good without the mask? Absolutely. I mean, one of the things we want to do is kind of go back to the old model we had in season one where we have Oliver, we call it Oliver in a suit stories, and I'm not going to give away any how going to be doing that, but rest assured that Oliver is going to have, uh, go back to having a public persona and splitting his time between being the Arrow and doing that, and we'll get a lot of the fun of those kind of stories. What about the flashbacks? It seems like we're getting awfully close to, you know, the beginning of the story that we saw, and so what happens when the flashbacks kind of... You know, we, we talk about that a lot. It, it, it's come up, you know, uh, Wendy, Greg, and I have had conversations about it. Stephen and I have had conversations about it. Um, we, we have we have a, a game plan. We have a game plan. Um, but what we're doing this year with the flashbacks, I think, is, is really going to surprise people. The people I do not think are going to see uh, what's coming. What is so, oh, what is about uh, Neil McDonough that sort of said Damien Dark? His, well, for one thing, it, it for us it started with we just we, first we just needed an amazing actor, like we needed someone who commanded the screen, who could you know, be, you know with with Matt Nabel and John Barrowman and Manu Bennett, the bar is set really high, so we needed someone who could play at or above that level. And in Neil, we found someone who has, you'll, you'll pardon the pun, the darkness and can project that menace that we need in a great villain. Because, you know, it's, it's cliche, but it's true. Your villain, is, your hero is only good, as good as your villain. Um, and one of the things we're doing this season, which is really awesome, is unlike previous seasons where you, we've waited halfway through the season in order to put our big bad on stage, you're going to get Neil McDonough as Damien Dark right from jump. Um, and he is just, he, he, he also brings a level of professionalism that, and passion that is very rare uh, in, in, you know, in, in all my years in the business. Like, he is already each sleeping and breathing this character and embodying him and has an incredible take. And it's, it, people are in for a treat. What could you say about the theme for the upcoming season? Like, is it new or? Um, we're, the theme for the season, well, a couple of things. Exploring the idea of magic, but also we're really exploring the idea of family. Okay. What does it mean, not just the Team Arrow family, but all the Queen family and Diggle's family, Felicity's family. We'll be expanding the universe or the characters to see what those people are like when they go home and seeing what their lives are like outside the Arrow Cave. And it's, and also, what, is it, what does it mean to be part of a family and the differences between found family and biological family and what does that mean to each of our characters? Will we be seeing more flashbacks from um, other characters in the news, like the Felicity or Dougal flashbacks in the past? Yeah, we're definitely going to, we've had success with those sort of, what we, even when we were in Hong Kong, we call them non-island flashbacks. Um, we'll definitely be doing that this year, um, but a little bit later in the year than we, you know, did last year. Um, I think 
you know, one of the things we sort of realized was we got off the Hong Kong story a little too soon by flashing back outside of that storyline without before it had a chance to really take root. Um, so my, my instinct is, is that the first non, you know, the, the non-Oliver uh, flashback will be in episode 408 problem. Are we going to continue to see Arrow and Flash crossovers, I assume? Uh, Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. work and they're fun, and I think Barry and Stephen have great chemistry. They're just fun episodes. How is that going to work with also with Legends? How are all the shows going to hook in together, and where is Legends going to play out, like in the time frame with how these shows are going? You know, I suspect we'll announce, uh, we'll answer a lot of that uh, at tonight's panel. Uh, so I'm going to sidestep that question. We won't tell anybody until then. Sure. We promise. Honestly, we won't say anything. <laughs> It different now writing going to season four versus when the show started what has really like, what's been a major change if there have been any from where you thought the show might go to where it is now well i think in the, at least for me having been there from first season from the jump i will say i think in the beginning we conceived it as being more procedural and it's definitely we moved away from that very quickly um but one of the things that we've discovered that I think really works is making sure that whatever all of us went through emotionally really speaks to the action and that's really what we work for in every episode and that it's evolved but it's pretty much the core of what we do. Are there any season, <laughs> season three spent a relative amount of time in the present Starland outside of Starland City. Will we see more of that or will we be learning more about the city and maybe the class dynamics of the different parts of the city? Definitely spending a lot more time in the city. Um, you know, this year, every year we strive to make the city a character in the ensemble. I think this year we're really going to do it. Like uh, I, I, the intentions we've always gone into each season, I think, are really getting played out uh, in here in season four. Are there going to be any new regular locations within the city or elsewhere that you can tease, like places like the Foundry or somewhere else? Well. Foundry's kind of compromised, a little bit, so yeah. it won't be the Foundry. <laughs> I don't know. So is there a replacement for the Foundry, or...? There might be. They're working at a Big Belly Burger. <laughs>